Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, today we're going to wrap up our, our discussion of the Bohr atom, and specifically we're going to take what we discussed last time, which was um, effectively we, we realized that, and again, I, I, I still think... Um, I still think this is just a, a really cool result that we've gotten out, that um, we, we use the de Broglie wavelength in the fact that electrons, or, or particles in general, have a wave-like nature, and we can calculate exactly what the wavelength of these massive particles is, and using that, and really based on just simply the, the principle of uh, uh, wave interference, we recognize that those allowed energy levels of the Bohr atom are precisely the levels where you can fit an exact perfect integer number of wavelengths around in a circle. Now, the one thing that, that I did, I, I, didn't, I didn't quite give a big enough disclaimer. Um, the Bohr model of the atom is fundamentally wrong, so don't, don't think of it too literally. The, the, um, the, the model is, is the key word here. Models aren't physically perfect explanations. Models are just simply guesses based on the, and I used this word earlier, phenomenology that we observe or the phenomena that we observe. So Bohr built up his model based on, on um, I, I had mentioned his premise was that if angular momentum is quantized, then naturally those orbitals are precisely the same as the orbitals where you have that precise number of uh, de Broglie wavelengths. Now, as we'll learn in a, in a few weeks here, that's not really correct, and his, his, his kind of assumption that electrons orbit like the solar system model, where you can like trace a path around a circle, is fundamentally wrong. And I think in a chemistry class you've probably heard about this, we now properly view it as what we call the electron cloud. Um, we'll, we'll get to that later, but just understand though that the model that he set forth accurately describes how it works, even though the physical, the physical mechanism by which it works, we do now believe to be slightly more complicated than that. So anyway, based on the, 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 um, the, the work that we had built up last time, we're now finally ready to actually calculate what the expected radius of the Bohr atom is and what the energy levels of the Bohr atom are. And, and this is kind of cool because we've used some crazy, un, un, unreasonable assumptions that, do, that don't follow from classical physics. But now what we're going to do from this point on is we actually are going to use classical physics the laws of literally classical mechanics that like Newton and Galileo had understood, and the laws of electromagnetism that, that uh, Maxwell had understood. And so we're going to apply those classical results to a fundamentally quantum system, and that's where we get out this, ultimately the fullest description of the Bohr atom that, that we can really develop here. Um, and then we're going to take a, a left turn and talk about things that are entirely unrelated strictly because of this new and groundbreaking news that we think just, uh, just uh, came out today, where Fermilab had announced... Um, we think there is fundamentally a new force of the universe, and so I think really to kind of give a full appreciation of it, I, I want to go through and describe what we, uh, what, what we call the, um, the standard model of particle physics, where, you can, where, where we basically have, have put all of the particles that we observed up until today into a really nice framework, and you'll see kind of what, that there's more things that, that you, that, than you probably know of at this point. Um, so, for example, muons and tauons. So, we'll kind of describe the, the different families and the different generations of particles. And there's a really nice chart that you can actually like put together at the end about how all of the standard model works. And then we're going we're to scratch the whole damn thing off because we think there is something new and revolutionarily wrong about this now. Which is, again, I, I, I just, I'm really excited to, to have found out about this myself today. So, um, that's where we're at. And uh, let's go ahead and begin with the Bohr atom. <laughs> 